Hello. Algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to do a review video on quadratics. Now, other, for the level two kids, I'm going to do one more major review video, which will involve uh, box and whisker plots and stem and leaf plots and that kind of stuff. That should be from last year. But uh, for uh, this one, um, this is quadratics. Uh, this is probably the last major one for the honors kids, unless you would send me a video and say, hey, I need some help with this. So, anyway, let's get right down to it. Now, remember with quadratics, we can factor sometimes. And if you can factor it, it's done a lot more simply. I know this is a trinomial, and I know that the factors of 6 that add up to 5 are 2 and 3. So this is going to factor as y equals the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 3. Now, you won't be expected to factor on the uh, final, but if you remember how to do it, man, it sure can be useful. All right, I can set it equal to 0, and now I'm going to solve each part, x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. And I will get x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 3. Now, what did I just find? I just found my zeros. Negative 2 and negative 3 are right there. Now I can go find my vertex. So I'm going to take x equals negative b over 2a. I'm not saying negative b over 2a. I'm saying x equals. You know, I probably should identify A, B, and C, make sure I don't make any mistakes here. And so A is 1, B is 5, and C is 6. So it's going to be negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2 and a half. So the x coordinate of my vertex and my axis of symmetry are the line x equals negative 2 and a half. You shouldn't be getting that wrong anymore about what the equation is because you know what the asymptotes we did from the... Uh, exponential function, they were all y equals, and they were horizontal lines. Well, this is a vertical line, and notice the equation is x equals, okay? That's intentional. That's the way it is. It's not just some kind of strange oddity. All right. Now, to get the uh, y coordinate of my vertex, well, I can plug in 2.5 into an input-output table. And so I'm going to put negative 2.5 in for the equation. So I'm going to get y equals negative 2 and a half squared plus 5 times negative 2 and a half. And then I'm going to add 6 to it. All right. Well, 2 and a half times 2 and a half should be 6 and a quarter. It's going to be positive because they were squared. Uh, this is going to be a negative. Let's see, it's going to be 10. So it's going to be a negative 12 and a half and then a positive 6. Now, working smart, not hard, thinking about like terms, I know I have all like terms there, but I'm thinking about the addition, the positives and the negatives. I've got 6 and a quarter positives, and I've got 6 more positives, so I'm up to 12 and a quarter. I have 12 and a half negatives. This is going to come out quite simply to be y equals negative uh, 0.25. So my vertex is right here. It's the point negative two and a half, negative a quarter. Not two and a quarter, negative a quarter. And so it'll be something like this. And now I'm ready to draw my parabola. Notice I did not go to an input to output table immediately. The first thing I always do is look for roots. Always. Always, always, always. Okay. So this one here, this is another good one to factor. I'm not going to factor it, but you go ahead. You pause the video, see if you can factor it. I'm going to do it using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to identify A, B, and C. Some of you are thinking A is 1, and that's fine. And you think B is negative 9, but you could never be more wrong. Remember, B is the number of x's in the equation. Mr. Lawrence, I don't see any x's. Therefore, it's 0 x's. C is negative 9. C is the number without a variable, a constant. All right, so now I'm going to use my discriminant. Remember, the whole formula is x equals negative b plus or, oops, I missed it, plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so 
next I'm going to, hold on, I've got to answer my door. And the problem is I can't pause this. So I'll have to tell you, I'll have to talk to you later because I can't pause the video. Would you like to say hello? Hello. All right, thank you. I'll, you can come in if you like, but it's going to be a few minutes. All right, so sorry about that. It's Mr. Malio. I'm so disappointed he didn't say hello. He missed his chance, his one chance at fame. Anyway, he's going to take a seat, and he can watch the video while I'm doing it, or he can work on something, but he came in to ask a question. So first thing I'm going to do is the discriminant, because that will tell me how many solutions there are, b squared minus 4ac. And uh, by the way, Jared, if you hear me make a mistake, Point it out, okay, so I can correct it right away, right. just in case I miss it. If you don't hear it, that's okay. So b is 0, uh, minus 4, a is 1, and c is negative 9. So it looks like that's going to simplify to 36, and 36 is a positive, so therefore there's going to be two solutions, right? Those of you in first period heard Erica say that this morning. There's going to be two solutions. So now Dylan Bell said, hey, let's put it back into the quadratic formula and figure out where those solutions, or they're also called roots, are. So I'm going to put 0 plus or minus the square root. Now, I'm not going to rewrite the b squared minus 4ac. I know it simplifies to 36. I'm going to work smart, not hard. And then I'm going to put 2 over a, just like that. Now, the rad of 36 is 6, right? You could use your dating idea if you need to. I don't think you need to, but you could. And I'm going to put it over 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. And so my zeros are going to be 3, some number, and negative 3, some number. And if you're Emily Craddock, you know that their roots are zeros, so the y-coordinate has to be 0. So I can plot those. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 0 is right there. And then positive 3, 0 is right there. Okay. Now, I need to find my vertex and my axis of symmetry. Now, some of you are pretty smart. I bet you could find the axis of symmetry right now. Yeah, it's going to be the y-axis, isn't it? What's the equation of the y-axis? Well, it's x equals 0. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. But let's pretend you didn't notice that. Let's go and do x equals negative b over 2a. Well, negative b is 0 over 2 times 1. So I get 0 over 2. Now, if you get confused as to what that is, take the half a second and punch it in a calculator. You'll find 0 divided by 2 is 0. There's the axis of symmetry, x equals 0. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 0. To get the y-coordinate, I'm just going to plug it in. I'm going to go y equals uh, 0 squared, and I've lost my train of thought. Oh, it's just minus 9. Minus 9. So when I simplify that, I get a negative 9. There's the y-coordinate of my vertex right there at 0, negative 9. All right, now I can draw my parabola, and you can get ready to laugh because this is always difficult to do with the airliner uh, when the points are kind of spread out. But I can still do my best. It's not too shabby. Okay, of course, with a pencil, it's a lot easier. Uh, anyway. There you go. Now, again, on this equation, it would have factored nicely. It would have factored as x plus 3, x minus 3. When you set that equals 0, you're going to get 3 and negative 3 for your roots. But you don't have to factor. Okay, let's stop down to this one. Let's find a, b, c. Easy as negative 1, 1, negative 10. All right, so we've got that. We're going to go look for our discriminant. Always look for the discriminant first. I can't believe how many of you, when we did this unit, ran to t-tables or input-output tables. No, find the discriminant first. The b squared minus 4ac. So we've got b squared minus 4 and negative 10, just like that. So I'm going to get 1 minus 40, which is going to be equal to negative 39. There are going to be no solutions, which means this graph will not touch the x-axis, right? No solutions. I can still graph it. Go to find the axis of symmetry in the vertex. x equals the negative b over 2a. Okay, which looks like it's going to be a half. So my axis of symmetry is at x equals 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and show that axis of symmetry. Okay, it's going to look like this. And it's dotted because it's not part of the graph. 
All right, I'm sure Andrew Ozan is going to come in and say, oh, you left the arrowhead off the top of it, which it doesn't really matter. But anyway, okay, so let's see here. Let's make an input-output table. And I know one half is going to go in the middle because that's my axis of symmetry, and I want everything to be symmetrical about it. All right, I think I'm going to pick zero, and then I'm going to pick one because I want half a unit to get to zero, and then I'm going to go half a unit in the other direction. So I'm going to do y equals uh, the negative of 1 half squared. Going to follow the order of operations there. Notice the negative is outside because I'm not plugging in a negative number. And then I need uh, plus 1 half and then minus 10. So I'm going to get 1 fourth, then it'll become negative, negative 1 fourth, plus a half minus 10. And so this number is twice as big as that one, so it'll come out to be 1 fourth minus 10, which should equal negative 9 and 3 fourths. So negative 9 and 3 fourths is the y coordinate of the vertex. It's going to be way down here at uh, negative, or excuse me, at positive 1 half, negative 9 and 3 fourths. All right, now I've got a feeling my work's going to get in my own way here. But that's okay. Let me just get that work out of the way. And let me do the simple math and put in zero. So I'm going to get y equals uh, the negative of zero squared plus zero minus 10. Well, that's going to simplify to negative 10, isn't it? So zero is at negative 10 right there. Hey, look at that. It's below my vertex. You know what? I should have known it was going to be below my vertex before I did any math. Now, because of symmetry, I'm at 1, I'm going to get negative 10 as well. And so that will be there also. All right, so my parabola is going to open downward. Can you figure out why it's going to open downward? I knew ahead of time. I knew because A was negative. A was less than 0, so therefore my parabola opens downward. It has no solutions. It's not going to cross the x-axis. All right, I think I've got one more I'm going to do for you. This would be a good one to factor. I won't do it by factoring because factoring is not on the test. But if you know how to factor, it is fair game to do it that way. All right, so real quick, we're going to go A, B, C. And we're going to get 9, negative 24, 16. We're going to go for our discriminant. So we're going to go negative 24 squared minus 4 A, C, right? Okay, and so 24 squared, well, I know 25 squared is 625, ah, oh, is it 576? I'm going to check that. Uh, yeah, it is 576. Okay, so there's 576. All right, and now I've got 4 times 9, which is 36, right? I'm not going to multiply 36 and 16. I'm going to double it, double it, double it, and double it again, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is just like 16. So, 36 doubled is 72, that doubled is 144, that doubled is 288, and that doubled is 576. How about that? We're going to get a zero. Our discriminant is zero, which means there's going to be one solution. Okay? Now, I'm not going to use the whole quadratic formula on this, because my one solution is going to be my, my root, but it's also going to be my vertex. So I'm just going to go find the vertex. x equals negative b over 2a. And I'm going to plug in uh, negative of negative 24. And that's going to be over uh, 2 times 9. So that'll be 24 over 18. And if I simplify that, uh, I'm thinking 3. So we're going to get 8, 6. No, I should do 6. Silly me. We're going to get 4 thirds. We're probably at 1 and 1 third. So the axis of symmetry is 1 and 1 third. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 1 and 1 third. Now, because there's only one solution, the vertex is sitting on the x-axis. I know the y-coordinate. I don't have to go and plug it in. You can plug it in if you want here, but it's a lot of extra work because it's going to be 0. It's sitting on the x-axis. So let me show my axis of symmetry at 1 and a third, right about there. And then, let's see here, uh, 1 and 1 third, 0, so there is that. It's opening upward because 9 is positive, the 
A is positive, right? Okay, I should label that one and one third. Jarrett, you're being very patient. I'm almost done. All right, so we're going to make an input output table. And I know that one and one third occurs at zero. I'm going to put zero in for X. And when I do that, I'm going to get 16 out. So I think maybe I'm going to count by twos. I'm always going to tell the reader I'm counting by twos. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So there's the point uh, zero, sixteen. And then to make my math easy, I went one and a third this way. I'm going to go one and a third in the other x direction, which will be two and two thirds. Okay? And then I have to get 16 out because of symmetry. And that's why I do it to make it simple. So one third, oh, I need to go two and two thirds. So two and two thirds would be about there, and 16. And so that'll be two and two thirds, and then the y coordinate is 16. Ready to draw my parabola. This stuff is getting so, oh my goodness, what the heck is that? All right, I guess I'm going left first. Something like that. And again, you can go ahead and laugh because it's not easy to do with the airliner. There we go. I expect a much better job with the pencil. All right, that's it for the video. Any parting words from you, Mr. Malio? No? Nope. As usual. All right, how about this one? Say goodnight, Jarrett. Good night. Oh, you missed the joke. I'll tell you later. Good night, everybody.